So we're going to welcome you. Welcome, welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. We are giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise. And today we are purposing to continue on in the charge that God has put in our heart. These are things that God has put in our hearts to do and which all of us are deemed to be epistles of uh, and read of being there reading us. Uh, whether you were saved or not unsaved, people are still reading you. <laughs> you know, it, it's all throughout our experience. But we are thanking God today that he has given us this mindset to continue on to be, uh, to to teach the scriptures, talk about him, witness about him. The Bible says we are all living epistles, read of men. And so he is uh, moving in our lives so that we can continue to uh, can move forward in the straight and narrow way to encourage us through word, through uh, songs. And today is Sunday, and we had an awesome time with the presence of God in the house of God. Well, among the saints in the congregational um, uh, worship, there's a congregational uh, uh, anointing, a corporate anointing, they call it. And the Lord was there, and my soul was blessed. And so as I uh, came out, this particular one that we're going to talk about today is, uh, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Uh, have you been to Jesus um, for the cleansing power? And that followed my thought on, have thine own way, Lord, the God being the refiner's fire. But something in the spirit today moved, it was in my thoughts, okay? And I know other people were speaking, but the presence of God was truly there. And um, Pastor Capers um, at Freedom was talking about going on a fast and uh, the end of the month. And he was talking about um, um, being thirsty for God. But as he was talking the, and, and he was um, addressing the congregation in, in the flock of God, I could hear my spirit. It says to me, he was saying, you're not going to fast for the other times I would fast so many days for certain people. I would fast for them and I would blame them. He said, this time it's going to be a fast for you because I'm filling my vessels and my vessels need to be cleansed. My vessels need to be sanctified. They can't be caught up in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. They're, they're not full. So I'm purposing to fill. This is what I was hearing in my spirit. God was purposing to fill his vessels. A lot of times we think our fasting is for, you know, to loose the bonds and, and, and set the captives free. But he put in my spirit today as I was meditating and listening that this my this particular time for me is for me. And then um, uh, Sister Carrie in the church, she had said to me, she said, um, how long have you been doing the YouTube channel? And my mind just went, like, oh, three or four years. I'm not sure. But one mind says, that's not correct. So when I went to my seat, I looked on my YouTube and I said, oh, I started it like in 2007. So that means... Um, uh, 2017, something like that, 2017. And so I deemed it to be now it's, um, uh, seven years since I've been doing it. So I, I looked at back at, and I noticed in my life um, that God moves in my life in clips of seven. Uh, seven years old, my mother gave me away. Seven, uh, 14 years old, he, she came and took and, and called me back. At 21, I tried to commit suicide. God began to draw me in. Each time at 35, I got married. To, major things occur in my life in the stages of seven, in the numbers of seven. And so I said, okay, this is now, um, is now the time is in my life that God is, is apparently getting ready to do something brand new. So in 2017, and I looked and counted up 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So this is 2024. So it's seven years. So I said, okay, I'm expecting. Because I've always tracked my life for something major occurring every seven years. So now I said, okay, Lord, this YouTube channel has been running seven years. So whatever God's going to do, you all still connected with me or if I'm still here, we're going to we're gonna give God the praise for it. So this lesson today... And I joined in December uh, 18, 2017, the YouTube channel. And so this December coming up will be uh, seven years. And I always say to God, um, I, because I could track major changes, seven years old, all of us was given away to strangers. 14, I was able to come back to my mother. 
about uh, the age of 21, a major turn in my life when I wanted to not live. Thank you, Jesus. God interceded. I, all things happened to me in the number of seven. Now, everybody else have a different testimony. That's my testimony. So I know this year, the fact that this is the seventh year of this YouTube channel, I'm expecting something to occur. And so we're going to talk today about um, uh, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? We're going to sing that little song and we're going to go to the scriptures because I noticed today in the uh, worship service, like I said, God uh, was speaking. Pastor Caper was talking about um, fasting. And it really spoke to me that said, your fast now will not be to loose people or to for their healing. It's for you. It's for you so that you can get full and so you can be sanctified. So all I can hear is today, because generally I don't, I'm fasting for somebody else. I'm fasting for this one, three and four, I mean, three days, Okay. But he said, this is going to be for you, your fast, for you, you and between. And the, the song was, um, his message was going to be um, thirsting for God. So God had really begun to deal with me as he um, was talking that God had said, this is going to be for you. And then when he says, God says, um, the message was going to be, I'm thirsty for you. I'm thirsting for you. I said, okay, that's one of the thoughts I had concerning. So I believe this year, 2024, that God is going to going to start dealing with his vessels so they can leave here. You can't leave here if you're laboring in the field. You you got to you can't be doing like Martha all the time. Martha who's always busy and, and concerned about everybody else. You got to sometime sit down with Jesus and I believe this is going to be the year of consecration and sanctification in the vessels themselves. Not always worried about other people, not always doing to other people. Thank you Jesus. And this is what came to me as I was um feeling the presence of God in my uh, 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 spirit, that God said this fast would be for you to me, between me and him, okay? And so I'm purposing and whatever the Lord have me to do. So we're going to um, deal with are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And this am I washed? Uh, when we get ready to go to heaven, this, um, I was talking to uh, my husband. He was saying, I told him how powerful the spirit was moving. He said, we can't rub off. I said, no, we can't rub off. You got to know him yourself. Okay, so that's what the Lord is telling me. You you can labor for people, but it's personal. That's what this this subject is about. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? So let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you for this thought and this hour and this time in eternity. To you, I, everything is 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 the days that we think is so long and years are so long, but to you they're not. Thank you, Jesus. Time, as far as you can see, you know, you, everything in time is clear before you. Thank you, you, you are an eternal God. Hallelujah. You see the beginning and the end. You're the Alpha and Omega. You're the first and the last. Nothing. It's just like line, uh, time is like a line. You can see everything. Everything, every, every, every hair on our head, every sand. My God, we thank and praise you, Lord. For even today, reminding us, oh God, that we are need to come closer to you. We know that the time, according to your prophetic word, is coming for the rapture of the church. My God, hallelujah, to be snatched out of this world, to be taken out of the world. Hallelujah. You have promised that your bride will not go through these things that are coming, Lord God. And you remind me through the scripture, those who are far off. Lord God, those who are Ephraim, they will bear their own sins. Lord, help us, God, in the name of Jesus to be consecrated and sanctified and come closer to you. I pray that your word will fall on our hearts and minds and souls and help us, O oh God, to lay aside the weight and sin that does so easily beset us and run with patience the race that's set before us. We know that the time is short. As Paul said, the time is short, Lord. Help us to understand the season and time in which we end. As we yield to you, our body, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So, the song is, I'm trying not to do, be too long, y'all. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hallelujah. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walk 
walking daily by the Savior's side. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Thank you, Jesus. And this wash in the blood of the Lamb reminds me of the, when we just did talk about uh, being cleansed. And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, white as snow, and we're going to deal with Hebrews. Well, first we're going to deal with Psalms 51, which is what um, stuck, uh, stood out in my heart when I was um, meditating on this song, Psalms 51. And then we, the reason we it's imperative, Lord, that we uh, get into the word, we're going to find out is through the word of God, not only our engrafted word, which is able to save us, but the engrafted word, which is to give us wisdom and knowledge and the engrafted word, which is the sword of the spirit. So everything centers around the word of God, which is Christ. Okay. He is the word. Thank you. Jesus made flesh. Um, Psalms 51. We're going to go through that. Um, Psalm 51. Yes. And it says, have mercy upon me. O God, according to thy loving kindness, According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. This we're talking about. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And David says, wash me. Thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. This is personal. This is not a group thing. Thank you, Jesus. This is an individual request. David penned this here. It says, for I acknowledge my transgressions. The Bible says, if you confess our faults, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. David said, I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is ever before me against thee. And the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clean, clear when thou judgest. David acknowledged, because this is the time when he was cared Bathsheba husband killed. So she we talked the other day to, uh, the, the last video about um have thine own way when God was searched out. David was one of the ones who God searched his heart. He sent the prophet to David and said, David. You know, he, he he pleaded with David and David said, this man who did this, he should be killed. And he said, you're the one. Because God talked about the secret things in our heart and the things that will come up. And I was feeling the presence of God today. There's little hidden deep things inside of us that God got to flush out. Okay, so he sends this and David is beginning to acknowledge. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee. And thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judges. Talk about sin. Sometimes David did this thing and he thought nobody knew. Go talk about secret sins, uh, th things that we do secret in our hearts, sneak around and do, okay? Do it in the dark, you know? Uh, nobody physically have seen you, but God is seeing everything, okay? Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desire truth. In the inward parts. And in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So David's talking about this thing. I mean, I'm being the king. I did this. So this is talking about when it says, um, um, create in me a clean heart. Purify me, purify me so that I may work. So God is in the stage now to help us to examine ourselves against hidden things. Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts and in the midst of 
In the hidden parts, thou shall make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. We're going to pick up on the word hyssop. Okay. It said, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create within me a clean heart. Thank you, Jesus. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. This goes back to the church too. It's not just David because in Revelation, he tells them and threatens them that he will take his spirit from them. Okay. And this is the church. That means us in this age, in this season and time, we are in the church. One of those seven churches in Asia. Thank you, Jesus. That's revealed in the book of Revelation. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy way and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness. That means he killed somebody. Okay. Oh God, thou God. Now, a lot of people think they're killing people in the name of God. But David said, deliver me from blood guiltiness. Because when you kill somebody, you are guilty of the 10, breaking the 10 command. Thou shall not kill. Thank you, Jesus. And David said, deliver me from blood guiltiness. Oh God, for thou God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, or else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. And a broken spirit and a, a contrite heart is a humble, humble Humility. Thank you, Jesus. Do good to in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thy altar, which means that these bullocks are the fruit of our lips. Okay. It takes us to Psalm 34 and 18. So David is praying, and a lot of people think, well, I'm I'm representing God because I'm out here killing. But David said, listen, uh, 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 deliver me from blood guiltiness, O Lord, uh, thy God, for my salvation of my salvation. So David said, blood guiltiness means he killed somebody, and he's guilty, and he's worth. And the scripture code tells us in the Old Testament, that if you kill, then you're gonna be killed. Okay, so that's why David is praying, Lord, create within me a clean heart, renew the right spirit within. Me. Blot out my transgressions before you. The sins I've done, blot them out. Okay? And so we're going to look at that in Psalm, I put Psalms 34 and 18. The reason I think this is important, now, not because I'm 73, y'all, okay? So it, it, it means anytime God comes into your life, anytime God brings you into his, his fellowship, his mission is to sanctify you, He's purchased you, brought you from darkness, and now he wants us to grow up in Christ. Okay. Psalm 34 and 18. And it says, um, the Lord is nigh to them that of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit or remorseful heart or a remorseful person. And many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, and that went with the YouTube we just did. We just did have thine own way, Lord. And through sanctification and through afflictions, it said these things are coming upon us uh, to bring for us to bring us forth as pure gold. Okay, but now we're in the stage to talk about have you been to Jesus? So now we're going to talk about the um, the blood. For the scripture declares, without the shedding of blood. Now anyone who who is pursuing God, even those in different. Uh, uh, Groups and they said, Well, we're going back to the Old Testament and we're picking up some of the things from the Old Testament. It says in the Old Testament, without the shedding of blood, and all the sacrifices of the Old Testament was done with a lamb that was without spot or without blemish who had been checked out, and then that blood of that lamb was, was uh, uh, the lamb was killed and then the blood was applied. But we know, uh, we're going to see from the scriptures today how it says, um, through, um, uh, without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. So th in order to the re remission of sins come when it means um, 
um, blotting out the handwriting on the wall or remission means canceling your sin or um, uh, annulling your sin. So Christ, God put in the, in, the, in the scriptures, without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission. But we know according to the times that God went through, all of they did the rituals continuously. Even now they're preparing for a red heifer. But this, it says clearly in the Old Testament that the blood of bulls and bullocks could not consecrate. It had to be done over and over and over again. Well, you know, God does not continuously have to continue to do anything. He would brought it into the fullness of time when he brought Christ. Okay. And that's what we see here. Um, the, when he says in Psalms 51, verse 7, purge me. That's what David said, purge me. So we're going to look at the word purge. David says in verse 7, purge me with hyssop. Okay. Now, when looking back at the word hyssop, it goes back to the Old Testament in which we're going to deal with that word uh, purge me with hyssop. Okay. Going back to Exodus um, 29. Purge me with hyssop. Which is something used in the atoning uh, uh, rituals that was done. Um, hyssop was used as a plant. It says it's like a minty kind of plant. And it's, uh, I saw it like purple. And they take this um, the, the, uh, the hyssop plant. And they would dip it in the uh, thing where the animal's blood was, and they would uh, uh, sprinkle it. Even when they were talking about the Lamb of God, which we're going to go to Exodus, they took the um, the hyssop plant, which is like a bitter herb. And in some things in the natural realm, it says for healing. So this is all tied to Christ and his blood. Exodus 29. And the reason we must study this, because the interest of God's word brings light. Now, I know we think we're just reading words, but it, his word brings light. His word is light. It is light and life. That's why it's imperative that we study the scriptures. It says, search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which to testify of Christ. They testify of the Lord. Okay, Exodus 29, verse 36. This is important. And thou shalt offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for the atonement. And thou shalt cleanse the altar when thou have made an altar for it, and thou shalt anoint it and sanctify it. So it's talking about seven days you should do this here. Okay, then we're going to Leviticus and give us a little more insight to this uh, consecration and atoning blood. Uh, Leviticus 8 chapter. All coming down to Christ. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Uh, Leviticus 8 and verse 15 says, and he slew it, and Moses took the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar round about uh, with his finger and pur purified the altar and poured the blood at the bottom of the altar and sanctified it uh, to make reconciliation. So not only the blood is for, for atonement, it's also for reconciliation, okay? Be to, for us to be reconciled back to God. Now we're going to Leviticus 14. All of this is important. I know it's taking up a lot of your time. <laughs> but these things have to be in us, you know. When we talk about being made fat in the word of God, that means eating. You don't live by bread alone, but by every word that, that proceeded out of the mouth. So when he tells us to search the scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for us, for reproof, for uh, uh, correction, uh, instructions in righteousness. So it's, we need these words for our soul to understand the way to go, okay? Because the word is a lamp and a light. So you need to know that. Otherwise, your mind will start be filling up with some of this stuff on on, on the YouTube and and the TikTok and and, and YouTube and everything. And, and it's giving you it's weeds. It's weeds. It talks about the soul sowing the seed, which is the word of God. Some fell among thorns and some fell on thorny ground. But it's the word of God which brings life. That's why you have to stay in the word because your mind will start drifting off into something. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any sense because what's happening, the enemy will snatch the word up out of your conscious and out of your heart. And then it, it's not, uh, or it hadn't even got down in your heart. He snatched it out your head first and before you get down in your heart. Okay. But that's why you have to make a conscious effort to study the word. Okay. Leviticus 14 verses um, four through seven. Okay. <clears throat> Reason we're doing this, we're doing this for a reason. 
Uh, then shall the priest command to take for him uh, that is to be cleansed two birds alive and, and clean and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. So this is what the priest is to do, to take uh, two birds, a live birds, and clean, clean them and then cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed uh, in an earthen vessel over running water. And as now you look at verse chapter 14, God knows. I mean, what things that had to go down and what reasons it is, or was written as a, as a, a type or a foreshadowing of holiness. Okay. We would have been, we'd have failed that test. Okay. And as the living bird, he shall take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. Okay. These are all these rituals. Okay. And to, and he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird loose. All this here is tied to God's requirement to even come once a year of to deal with sin. Okay. But we know as we look on down, you can look on down and it says, then we're going to go to um, Leviticus 49. All this is leading up to the type of re requirements for sanctification. We were looking the other day, my sister and I said, Lord, if we were in them days, we would be already killed, okay? We would be definitely killed because God would have just killed us because we was definitely in the state of sin, okay? Now, um, this must be 49. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel, we're going to go over to Ezekiel. The reason I'm telling this is because this, the song is, Are You Washed in the Blood of the Lamb? How you been to Jesus for the cleansing. How you wash. And that means personally. Personally, as David talked about Psalm 51. Personally confessing your sins to God. Personally asking God to cleanse you with his son. Purge me with his son. Which means what the, 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 the atoning and the reconciliation that the blood brings. And it's the blood of Christ. Now, not bulls and, and goats and birds. Okay. They cannot make an atonement. For eternity, God himself took on flesh. The word became flesh. And, and, and through that, he offered himself as the lamb of God. And God himself saw and was satisfied. Now we're going to Ezekiel. We may not, we may not, may not go through everything, but I want you to have this because um, a lot of times people think it's the rituals. Okay, way back in the 14th chapter of Leviticus. All the rituals, I can continue to do these rituals, but God is not satisfied. He said, behold, my beloved son, this in whom I'm well pleased. Okay. It's my son who is now on the earth, who had, who come on the earth in the time, in the fullness of time. John, the first chapter, y'all. Verse one. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Okay. The same was in the world. It said he was in the world. The world was made by him, but the world didn't even know him. Okay. So now we see here, God has already set the standard. And if, if it was quiet to continue the Old Testament, there would not have been a break after Solomon. 400 and some years after God's glory departed from the Solomon's temple and God went away from the children of Israel and 400 and some years. And then when John the Baptist came on the earth, then what did John the Baptist say? Repent, <laughs> repent. Cause it was over 400 years. And what during those 400 years history record, they went into their own form of worship. They went into their own form of idolatry. They eat. God was not even, they, God was not even speaking to them. Okay. And the time came that God put a space of 400 years, which goes back again to 400 years down there in Egypt. It goes back again to 40 days, uh, 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 days of spying out and 40 years in the wilderness. God is exact in whatever he does. So it took 400 years. To, now he comes back and he's his um, messenger, which was prophesied that the messenger should go before him. And he, the messenger was John the Baptist. And look how he was born. It was a miracle. His mother and father was a uh, uh, mother was barren. And you can look at that whole story. God intervened to make sure that he had the right soul in the earth and get sent it through somebody else who was barren again, like Abraham and, and Sarah. 
Okay. God is actively involved in his plan. Okay. He didn't leave it up to man. He's not man. It's the plan of God. Okay. So Ezekiel 36 chapter. I want to read that. Um, beginning at the 16th verse. Okay. This is, I'm not going to take too long. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. There was before me as an unclean of a woman, a removed woman. So he said they were as a, a unclean. This is what their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. You know what that means? That woman is in her time uh, when she's uh, uh ministries okay that's it he said she said that's how israel is to me okay wherefore i poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it and i scattered them among the heathens and they were dispersed through the countries according to their ways and according to their doings which who says the ways and doings but except jeremiah there wasn't only Ezekiel. Jeremiah said, men, your ways and your doings. Okay. And he says, uh, uh, to their ways and doings, to their doings, I judge them. And when they entered into the heathen, when they entered into the heathen, whether they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of the, his land. But I had pity on my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathens, whether they went. So the, they did not represent God in the light of the heathens, people who didn't know God. Okay. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus says the Lord, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my own name's sake, which I have profaned, which you have profaned among the heathens, whether you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profane among the heathens, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord, when I shall have sanctified in you before the, when I shall be sanctified before, in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathens, gather you out of all countries. Okay. You know that happened in 1948. Okay. And bring, now this in Ezekiel, was even before these people were born. Even before they were born. It just, now, that's not unusual because God was talking to Abraham before he even had a seed. He said, your seed is going to be down there in Egypt for 400 years. And Abraham said, I don't even have any children. <laughs> Lord, you way out. That's why I said time means nothing to God. Time is just, it's just, this is, you can look right at it and see every bit of it. He said, Abraham, you're going to conceive. And he said, well, go to, go into Ishmael. You know, my, uh, the, his wife said, go into to my handmaid and have Ishmael. He said, that's not the promise scene. 400 years before he even had Isaac. Okay. Now he's telling these people here, I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and you and will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh. And I will pour my spirit within you. I will pour, uh, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I shall give to you, that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people. So this is a promise at the end. But in this one passage, that was um, uh, uh, in 70 AD when they had crucified Christ and they did not want Christ. Christ was weeping and saying he's weeping for his people. And then uh, 40 years later, because Christ is like 30, 33, but 30 years old, 40 years later, which is at 40 come in there, okay? Okay, the 70 AD, then Jerusalem is destroyed and they're taking the temple down. You can see it in history, okay? So now we see he told them in the new prophet, okay? So we see God over here is telling you what he's doing with, within his plan of salvation. That's why it comes down to us, okay? That to make an atonement, the blood must be applied. 
And without the shedding of blood coming out of Hebrews 9 and 22, there is no remission of sin. And it's not the blood of the birds that we saw one, two birds, one was killed and the other one was dumped in. No, all that's finished with Christ. Okay. It's finished with Christ. What Jesus said is finished. It's finished. Okay. God sets the standard for salvation. I'm so glad he does not leave it in the hands of man. When I think about that, I could go to crying, okay? Because I give birth to three sons. I have grandsons. I had brothers, okay? There were six brothers, okay? Okay? And I don't know what happened to my father, okay? And you looking to see, if you're looking for man, we need to be born again as a race of people. And look what's going on now. Some of them, you know they men. They don't know what they are. They're, they're just mixed up. And, and, and that's why God sent his own son, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his son in the world to condemn the world, but the world through, through him might, might, might be saved. It didn't say, it said the word might. In the evening scripture, we was talking about that some of them, his blood, he, he died for all. But only those who believe him receive eternal life. Only those who believe him and receive him gets eternal life. Okay? And that's what we see here. Um, David said, make me to know. Make me to know. And I looked at uh, all these things to talk about God purging us, purging us and washing. And David said, purge me with hyssop. It, that word hyssop is, is, is something is used toward uh, the, the, the cross and the bitterness and the things that Christ went through. All these things that revealed and talk about washes. Who can understand the error of his ways? That's what David said in Psalms 19. Who can understand the error of his ways? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. We learned that in Psalm 51. Secret faults. The hidden things. I mean, all of us who are human beings, I mean, Nobody is trying to fool anybody else because we know what it is sin. Okay. Like I was talking to my mother, my husband, because my husband, when he met me, I was in the church. Okay. But he, he was trying to tell me, you don't know about the thing because he's from Harlem and he, you know, he was looking at the Harlem people and he was looking at things. And I told him, listen, before I was saved, first of all, the father who was in jail, I come from a whole line of people who was homemongers. Okay. And when I was in the Bronx and running around and carrying on, I was not in the church. Okay. And I know what sin is and I seen sin is and I know all about sin. Okay. <laughs> That's why I'm glad I'm saved. So we, I mean, now some people who maybe not didn't, didn't go into that. But then they go, they what they call uh, the, the kind of sin where they are prideful or um, self, uh, you know, like exalting self. That's what he says, a broken spirit and a contrite heart. So there's levels, there's degrees of it. But what the Bible says we all have sinned. Now, some have not been, like you say, walling with the pigs and down with the maggots and the worms. Some have been high and exalted which is a sin that we saw with the fallen angels. So all of us, God has lumped us all in the uh, category we all need saving. Either it's from pride or low self-esteem or something, okay? We need salvation. And it only comes through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, which you talk about uh, John the Baptist coming. And after 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament, God sent John the Baptist and said, uh, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, okay? And John was baptizing and they want to know, are you him? Because they hadn't heard from God in 400 years, okay? But now John is coming and the first thing he tell them is repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And God came into his own. From that time on and Christ came and we could see, okay, when Jesus wept over them, and he turned his three, 30 years, he was there. And them 30 years, y'all, go back to Egypt. Because Egypt, the children of Israel was in Egypt 430 years. 400 years in bondage, but before the bondage took place, they were in there for 30 years. That 30 years tied into the 30 years of Jesus' life when he was 30 years old. When they rejected him. Then he said the last three years, he went to, took his, his, his message to, the, to those, whosoever will. And he wept over Israel. He wept over them because they rejected him. They rejected him. They were, you know, singing and carrying on, but they rejected him. And he, he, he through these miracles and everything, they did not receive him. 
And then those last three years, those last three years ties into the three years that Israel is cut off. If you look at it, it says in the scripture, he said, they said in the third year, he will go back to recover. All these things working in the same thing. He said, in the, um, they talk about, um, uh, if we go on to know, we will know even as we are known. And then they talk about in the third year, he will go back to recover them. So when he separated them from them at the age of 30 and three years, he took it to the Gentiles and went to whosoever will. Okay. And then if you can't, would he stop with them at 30? And count 40 years, that's 70 A.D. Uh-uh. Yeah, A.D. And then the whole entire uh, place, that they, the whole worship was in it, and it was scattered. According to the prophet, he said, I scattered you all over the world. And in those places that you went, you defiled my name. But I'm going to bring you back. Okay, this is the word of God. But this is, we who are Gentiles, who have been born again through the word of, of God, uh, and grafted into a righteous branch and grafted into to, uh, uh, the, the house of God, we can't shun Israel because he's going to give us salvation too. He gave it to us and we were certainly heathens. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but my family was definitely heathens, okay? And I don't care how you clean it up, it was still heathens. It was still heathens. No matter how you clean it up, it was still heathens. Because the things I was looking at, my husband, he was looking at Harlem. He was born in Harlem and he was looking at um, the godfather or something the godfather of Harlem. And I said to myself, in my race of people, what were they doing? Selling the women? Doing, I mean, just, just, just terrible. We as a, me, I'm, I'm a person of color. I'm like, Lord, have mercy on my people. Have mercy on us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. One time we had some refuge in the church trying to teach us something, but then the church became polluted too. So we in trouble. So as a people, I'm praying for my people. And I'm, I'm right now the Bible said, you know what? You need just, I'm hooked up to Christ now. And that's why I need to be thinking of I me. Mean, it's looking for Jesus. It says, I'm thirsty for you, Lord. Because it's coming down to God is going to leave. And I thought about even trying to tell people and warn people. He told in this Old Testament, if you fail to warn the people, then their blood's going to be on your hand. I said, Lord, I don't want nobody's blood on my hand, okay? I'm trying to tell people as much as I can do as a being a witness and exposing some of my issues, letting them know. You got to be saved. You got to receive Jesus Christ in your heart. Psalms 51 and the whole Psalm 51. Psalms 19. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Okay. And go all the way down to uh, uh, Psalms 19. Read the whole Psalm 19 and Psalm 51. Okay. Uh, and Hebrews 9. You're talking for the, uh, if the blood of bulls and bullocks and heifers and sprinkling of the, un could un I need to read that. Thing. Then we're going to close out because the, we talk about the Old Testament. A lot of people right now are trying to take you back to the Old Testament as wicked as they are. Am I in their thoughts about murdering and killing? And, and how, how are you going to get to heaven with that foolishness? You're going to go to hell. That's the way I was on my way to until God snatched me out. Thank you, Jesus. And I put my soul into his hands now because I done seen some stuff on the world. But anyway, let's go Hebrews 9. A lot of people think, well, Mother Allen don't know. I came up in the South, left the South at 14, and went straight into an area of the Bronx, which was gang control. The school I went to was gangs. People were being killed. All kinds of stuff was going on. I got the experience and see some stuff that I thank God I'm not in it anymore. Thank you, Jesus. People want to know why I praise the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. I said, Lord, I thank you. You have, you rescued me. You told me that he rescued me. He rescued me. Now, some people I talk to, they still, they way up there above me. They way up above me, but that's fine. Okay. All I know is, Lord, he going to get me, he going to make me over again. <laughs> yeah. Lord, make me over again. This is a song. Lord, make me over. Make me over again. Lord, make me over. If I could just start over again. Thank you. And know what I know about God? My Lord. I don't know about y'all might be happy with you, what you got, but I am not. Because I look back on my life, I say, Jesus, I thank you. Anyway, Hebrews. I know I'm rambling and I'm going back and forth, y'all. But Hebrews, I want to read a little bit in Hebrews. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Yes. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verses um, 
Uh, let's start at the 11th verse, the 9th chapter. Well, you can read the whole 9th chapter of Hebrew because it really talks about uh, the uh, the Holy Spirit and Christ coming. It says, but Christ being, uh, bec being come a high priest, a good thing to come by the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and ashes or heifers sprinkling of the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Thank you, Jesus. For where a testament is, there must also of a necessity be death of the tester. So in my last will and testament. So in the, the Old Testament, okay, that's over with. For the testament is of force after man is dead. Otherwise, it is no strength at all while uh, the tester lives. So in other words, your last will and testament, you have to be dead, okay? Okay, that's when it, it comes, it's enforced. Wherefore, where upon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Even the first Old Testament was dedicated without with blood. For when Moses had spoken very uh, uh, every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book, which is the book, the law, the Ten Commandments and the people. Moses sprinkled it on everybody. Okay. Saying, this is the blood of the testament which God has uh, enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the sanctuary. Now, you know. Y'all think about it now. He done got this blood and he's sprinkling it over you. He's sprinkling it over the, the camp man. He's sprinkling it. Imagine if you went to church and the man had to go sprinkle blood over the whole building. Over the building and over the people and over the things and over the garments. He had to sprinkle blood. It said Moses sprinkled blood over everything. Okay. And almost all things by the law are purged with blood and without the shedding of blood is no remission. Okay. Therefore, it is necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with a better sacrifice than these. Heaven can't be purified with animals and the blood of animals. It's talking about in the fleshly realm. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figure of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holiest place every year with blood and other things. Not like the Old Testament prayer. They got to get to check the, the, the um, depending on the red heifer. And let's see and examine if any issues. If not, we can't use that. Okay. But God went past this here uh, situation. For then must he had offered, uh, suffered one, um, it says now, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others, the blood of uh, animals and, bird, and birds and, 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 and goats and everything. Okay. For this, for then must he had often, then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. That means if Christ from the foundation of the world, he would have just been suffered and suffered. There'd be no, no remedy. There's been no remedy. Just continues to have to kill things and sprinkle blood. Like Moses said, sprinkle on everything. Sprinkle on the, on the law. Sprinkle on everything. Sprinkle on the people. Yeah, just sprinkle in blood. Okay. But now once and for all, at the end of the year, has he appeared putting away sin by the sacrifice of himself. 
God's put away sin. Because you remember now, those bulls and bullocks and, and birds couldn't deal with the, the spiritual realm. That was only temporary because what, where does sin come from? Sin and pride, that, you got to go to the spiritual realm. That's why Jesus died and went into hell to get the keys back. You had to go into the spiritual realm. Them bulls and them bullocks, they're not going in there, okay? Their blood is not enough to go there and deal with that spiritual realm. But Jesus was and is. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And he used the word many because everybody won't receive him, even though his blood is shed for all. But it says to many, sins of many, and to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So this many is going back to as many as receive him. To them he gave power to become the sons of God. That's why the question is, are you washed? In the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hallelujah. <clears throat> and I want to see the part. I, I want to sing this other part too, Lord. Uh, are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? That's not the part one. Have you been to Jesus for his cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. So this is what it is. Are you washed? And I'm going to upload this song. And these scriptures, Psalms 51, Hebrews 9, Psalms 19, and all the talk about the Old Testament, Leviticus Leviticus 14, this, this Leviticus itself, the things that were quiet to be done over and over and over again. Hallelujah. It, it did not, it made me temporary where God would come down once a year. Okay. When God would give them grace once a year. Okay. But we talk about not being on earth. We talk about living with God. We talk about uh, 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 leaving from the earth and being uh, uh, reconcile because that's what the blood is for the atonement and reconciliation okay that's what the blood of Christ brings us at one back to God so that we can we can uh, he said I will walk in them and talk in them and it's not through the blood of animals so it's through the blood of Christ so I pray and the question is are you washing the blood of the land if you do not know the Lord take it from me okay and I'm gonna say I, I can tell you I think God saved me at such a young age because he knew I would be dead not only did I try to take my own life, but they, I was around some real homemongers. I mean, some real serious people. Some some people who wouldn't think nothing about taking your life. They didn't think of nothing about anything. They just was just terrible. Okay? They didn't even care. Thank you, Jesus. They, they, they was heartless people. And God saved me and rescued me. And that's why I serve him. I serve him. And they're they, they having a, a ministry talking about battered women. I know about all about that. Not for my husband here. But by the time I reached 24, I was going through uh, courts and everything, uh, uh, getting a, I told him a peace warrant. And then my husband said, it's an order of protection. I said, I call it a peace warrant because I wanted some peace. <laughs> I said, I'm going to get a peace warrant. But it was called an order of protection because that person was just determined they were going to just subdue me. And they were just going to rule over me. And God saved me. So I know what it is. And if you in if you have not accepted Jesus, okay, I always think about the adversary like a bully on the playground, just taking advantage of people. And that's how the wicked is. It's always trying to, to, to press them down. That's not God's way. God's way is that you have life and have it more abundantly. And so I'm praying if you go on this YouTube channel and you have not, and we have one little brother over here, he's trying to tell me something about whatever. But I told Lord, you who we always stand before, you will judge us. And as much as lies in me, I am a living witness that God can deliver out of some serious hands. Thank you, Jesus. Out of some serious hands. And God is still delivering. And God has sealed me with his spirit.
and encouraging me to get into this Bible. Right, it's okay. This, I got the King James Bible. That's the one I use. Okay, a lot of people got different versions, but that's the one I find to be a good sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And I've been using that one. And, of course, I use other uh, study um, material, which I shared with some of the books that I use. But the main thing is I go into the scriptures itself, and it's not just to talk to you about it, but it's to tell, to help me too. And I heard today in my spirit, it says, you, it's time for you, you're still pouring out and sacrificing and, and fasting days for other people. And it, it's one time he told me before, he said, save yourself from this untoward generation. And I had to look that up. I said, untoward? That means they're not even coming in my direction. They don't even want to be saved. And here you are sacrificing yourself all the time. So this time is going to come. I believe 2024, some major stuff going to happen. Now, this is the seventh year of this YouTube channel, which means yeah, I'm looking for something to really start to uh, manifest. God will for me in these next um, times as far as this YouTube channel. Okay, please pray for me. I'm praying for you. And God is looking at, all, looking at us all. Okay. He'll improve his love. So we just have to line up with him. Let us close out. Father, we thank and praise you for your grace and mercy and our sisters and brothers all over this world, wherever they may be. And thank you for all those YouTubers, young people who are taking up your word, the sword of the spirit, Lord God, and declaring your word. Help us, O oh God, to do, do declare it in season, out of season, reproving, rebuking with all long suffering and doctrine. Help us, O oh God, to uh, div rightly divide the word of truth, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And wherever there may be some that may be stumbling over what we're doing, Lord, we ask you, O oh God, to help them. Help them to see you, Lord God, and not to see us. Help us to under help them to know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. As we yield to us, to you, our body, soul, and spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. Be blessed, okay? God bless.